Howdy folks, I am late. Been a mad busy day, so three days in a row. What have you done, done to deserve this? Um, okay, so I'll just wait for some people to come online, make sure it's live. Yeah, we've got people online. So um, progression from yesterday and the day before. Um, two days ago, we talked about Youngberg losses. And uh, yesterday we talked about uh, a new idea that Johnny McWhirter introduced to um, do something about the massive bird of prey issue that we've got. So tonight is um, talking about a couple of things. I've been really busy for the last 24 hours looking into a lot of stuff that we were talking about yesterday. Um, by the way, share this video if you can, please, as much as you can. <laughs> Jeff, it's a vape. Um, right, so a couple of things we've got to discuss tonight, and I want as much input as possible. Uh, yesterday, 6,000 views later, we were talking about a new breeding program to get flyers being able to keep European Eagle Owls. European Eagle Owl, again, I'm not an expert. I'm learning fast. A European Eagle Owl will, is not fast enough to catch a pigeon in flight, is very territorial. And if a European Eagle Owl is in the area, you won't find other birds of prey in that area. I spoke to an expert today. I had a long conversation with him. He keeps two pair of breeding pairs of European eagle owls himself. Massively helpful guy, and I've got a lot more information. It's not as complex to keep these animals as we perhaps would think. From a space point of view, uh, the space they need is not as much as we thought. Realistically, you, we've been told that you can keep them in a 16 by 10 um, pen Avery and they will happily breed in there. If you're keeping a single one, you can bring that down to like a 12 by 8. They're not particularly active birds as far as we can uh, tell. They're only really active when they're feeding. So um, that kind of changes the dynamics of the plan a little bit for the better. So there's a couple of things to discuss tonight. More about that, that's the first thing. The second thing is a bigger picture organization that we're setting up as a nonprofit foundation, as an organization, not for profit, for the pigeon sport. The idea being is this, that pigeon flyers are tremendously generous to other charities but there's actually an argument whilst you know I, i'm i posted a couple of weeks ago about my music is life foundation and i got birds pledged for that and it's nothing to do with pigeons it's to do with mental health uh, so we're not saying of course not support other charities of course we are but there's an argument that actually charity begins at home and we need to get charity coming in. We need the community to donate back to things that are going to help this sport not only survive, but thrive and grow. So um, that's the second part we need to discuss tonight as well. I put a poll out earlier, and despite somebody calling it Brexit, which is not, put a poll out for opinions um, about the naming of it and what, but it's not as simple as I'll just pick a name. You've got to think of different multiple angles here on the name. So we need to discuss that as well. And then an extension of that is what we can do and what our plans are within that once it's set up. So we're looking to do this properly. We're looking to do it real. Um, so the first thing is, um, let's just catch up on one second. Hey, Michael. Uh, no, I haven't been able to find Dibbleberry yet, Shane. You maybe have to send me some. Um, I've got loads of people again. It's 
So uh, Martin says, a simple mark, get the stigma of our pigeons being flying rats with the public at large and you understand the chance pigeons are despised most in society. Change the public and you can change the dilemma. I completely agree, Martin, and that's what will be part of what we're looking to do. I call our birds athletes of the sky. That's what they are. I have many a conversation with very random people about the complete difference between a racing pigeon and a pigeon they see on the street. And one thing I'm good at is talking about stuff, as you may have gathered already. And I am good at putting over the sheer fascination. Uh, my, my girlfriend saw for the first time when she was up at Gary Tomlinson's last week, she'd never seen a pigeon fly. She'd never seen a flock fly. She was absolutely, she's not particularly into birds. She was absolutely fascinated by seeing those birds come back from that race. And that's what we need to get the essence of and the, and the sheer fascination of this through. And we can do that. So I agree, Martin, to, 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 to I completely agree with what you say. Um, get Pigeon Rachel on national TV. I completely agree, mate. Definitely. Right. So plan, first things first to discuss, the European Eagle Owl breeding program. Let's get some facts cleared up that I've learned uh, definite facts that I've learned um, in the last 24 hours. And some a bit random, but I'll tell you them anyway. Right. It is illegal to release European eagle owls into the wild. It is illegal. And I, I, I kind of should have guessed this, but I, I, I wasn't aware I'm not, you know, and then falconly. And again, before I go in, you know, I, as I said before, I love all animals. I won't even kill a fly. So this is an objective, long-term way that we're looking to fight back, but re reverse some nature. It is illegal to release European eagle owls in this country or in the UK, an island. You don't have to feed them live food it is illegal to feed them live food they feed on day old chicks um the barrier of entry of keeping these birds is a lot lower than johnny and i initially thought right so like i said earlier to keep them we're looking at a relatively size a real pen you're looking at like a you know for a single bird you're looking at like a 12 by 8 minimum and for a breeding you're looking at perhaps 16 to 20 foot by 8 to 10 foot that's for a breeding pet the average cost i've been told to keep them every month to feed them every month is about 10 pound a month okay that's one um and i have already been put in touch with people that can supply as good quality birds and we've johnny and i have spoke to a lot of people about this already so the idea again for anybody that didn't see it yesterday in the kind of extension of what we were talking about yesterday is to roll out a breeding program around the uk and ireland the idea is if you have these birds at your place one bird doesn't have to be a breeding pair but we'll go with breeding pair to get the numbers out if you have these birds at your place you are a lot less likely to have birds of prey around it makes complete sense to me i'll be doing it and that's part of the plan now uh, the actual practicalities we talked about yesterday we're going to do a charity fundraiser we're going to get going to be able to fund the development and the setup of this particular project but like i was saying to um johnny last night we've got to look at a bigger picture here right and the bigger picture is that we don't want to just do this. This is, needs to be one of the projects that we work on. And like I said yesterday, let me just turn this uh, light up a little bit. Like I said yesterday, the birds of prey issue is the biggest one we've got facing our sport at the moment. And um, if something doesn't get proactively done, then we're going to be suffering. What this program does is actually gives us a, a, a way of being able to properly above board fight the cause. That's what we need. So if you've got any questions specifically about that, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them in the quick time I'm learning about all of this. Uh, I've made some good contacts today with people that can help us out roll this program out. 
and we've already had people offering to partake and participate, sorry, in this program. So that's the first thing. The second thing is looking at a bigger picture. You know, in the six months near, so, so probably a little bit, yeah, six months I've been back involved in the game. I've been incredibly busy with figuring out what's going on. And I am not one for knocking people or the organizations. The RPRA do the best they can within the realms of this con con confined structure, as I call it. Um, but at the end of the day, things some things don't happen. Some things take too long. And we've got to be able to do stuff ourselves. And my, a message to any of the negative stuff that we had yesterday, uh, some idiot asshole was commenting. He put about 10 comments on the video I did yesterday. I don't even know who the geezer is. Don't even know how he got to watch the video. But we are, I am personally, Johnny as well, Johnny McWhorter, uh, we are not into the naysayers and the negativity. We had people saying there, the, the European Eagle Hour project won't work. We don't know if it will work. We're going to damn well try. And just saying something won't work and not trying, it's no good. It cannot happen. So we're not into the naysayers. We are going to give this a go and we're going to go. And in the bigger picture, like I said, I'm coming on to, this organization, this nonprofit organization, it won't actually in theory be a charity, but it will be a nonprofit organization. Um, it doesn't make any profits. Profits go back into its, uh, its activities. This as a bigger picture is the future driving force of what we're talking about doing. So we're not just talking about doing the European Ego Out project. Um, we are talking about promoting the sport, like uh, Michael, I think it was said earlier, you know, um, getting, getting more schools involved, promoting how great this sport is, and a whole bunch of other stuff we can do, you know, getting on national TV. Talk. I, I would quite gladly go on national TV next week and talk about this sport and how great it is. Won't quite look like this. i would clean up a little bit, but um, we need that, right? And there's lots of things we can do, you know. I know, I know Richard Chambers at the RPRA is doing a schools program. We can help support that. We can do our own as well in addition, run alongside it in parallel. Um, we can help people that have got either problems, we can promote it, we can brand the sport as it needs to be to move into the future and to revolutionize this sport moving forward. That will be the goal of this whole thing. So it's not just the European Ego Out project that we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be working on many other things. And that's the vehicle moving forward. So every single penny that's generated into this organization will go back into the sport. But it won't have all the red tape crap associated with perhaps other organizations that are scared to spend their money that they've generated. We will have a, a, a committee of people, not massive committee, and we will basically say, right, we're going to go and do this. If it makes sense and it can bring the sport forward, promote it, help existing people that are in there and bring new people in and revolutionize things, get that new thinking up, that's what we're going to do. So that's the new organization that we're talking about doing. And the European Eagle Hour project will be one part of it. Excuse me one second, guys. I've just got to check up on something. So, yeah, the European Eagle Hour project will be one part of, of it. Um, so, uh, let's catch up on the uh, the chat. Jeffrey Smith doing great things. Thank you. Cheers, Jeffrey. Much appreciate. Uh, I do ground maintenance at primary schools, and I'm always suggesting to them they get racing pigeons at schools. They've offered to take pigeons and explain kids away. That's exactly the kind of stuff we're talking about, Shane. Uh, Lee Hammond. Lee, I did see your message earlier. I will respond as soon as I've caught up later on today, I promise. Small contribution from flyers, yearly subs, including the roller and typical guys too, will benefit all. Good point. Roller and typical guys have a major issue. 
which I will come on to in a minute with the name of this organization that we had some big debates about earlier. Um, Lee Hammond, Freedom of Information Act request from RSPB as to what legalization they relied on to release captive bred peregrines. We can use the same legalization for owls. Good point, mate. Good point. Petition to have European Eagle Owls added to the protected list. Kevin, you may not have caught me earlier when I started. I have had it confirmed to me today that it is illegal to release European Eagle Owls. So we got to, I think, phase it. Get flyers keeping these birds to help protect their immediate areas. That's logical to me. Then working with people, uh, one of which is on this, has offered his help already to actually fight to allow the eagle owls to be um, protected. I hope that answers the question. Lee must ensure breeding stock is genuine European blood, not higher bred. We need to prove it before raising any young birds. Okay. John O'Brien, building public appreciation for the sport is important. I'm part of the documentary being made at the moment. It's going to help. Great, John. Anything I can do to help with that, I would love to be involved. If I can push it in any way, let me know. Get the schools involved and start the young generations involved in sport in their future. I completely agree. Uh, let's make a documentary. I will contact Netflix. Right. So this is the decision we need to make next. Um, so this organization, like I say, not just going to be focusing on the Eagle Owl project, going to be doing other things, going to be generating money. It's like if we could get half the, the flyers out there across all of the regions and the different organizations donating five or ten quid a month to this, it could be a big thing. Plus we do charity auctions. we got all the big names on board. We can do whatever else. We can get this to become a powerful thing. And there's no profit in it for anybody. Every single penny goes back in to the thing. Now, realistically, if it grows big enough, yes, you may need somebody and you may need to pay them for admin. Or with the our project, we obviously would have expenses to, to do that stuff. But this is not going to be the kind of thing where people take the piss and start taking salaries or anything. The only um, that kind of thing would only happen, I staff would only happen if it got big enough where it did need somebody running admin or stuff and that wouldn't be any of us that are setting it up anybody involved in this that's setting it up and running with it it's zero out of it no bullshit none of that crap it all goes back into it so um so okay so we what we've got now is name so uh simon we believe that's the case we believe that's the case simon black uh brick Partly a visual deterrent, but there's an idea that we've got to get as many people being able to handle these birds and have them flying out. And Andy Pereira says the hooks know they're about. This geezer I spoke to today, who's an expert, he actually runs an Eagle Owl Facebook group. Um, he has two, two breeding pair himself. He said, he keeps uh, not racing pigeons, but he keeps pigeons and he keeps Harris hawks and what have you. He said, he does occasionally get uh, sparrow hawks around, but he gets no other birds of prey. Yeah, Shane, um, your auction of young birds is on the cards, mate. Um, I completely agree, Morris, that is the case, but it is completely illegal to release them. Okay, so... Look, we need to. I need some opinions and feedback. The the overwhelming um, feedback on the name, so the overall popularity of the name of this new 
organization was Pigeon Sport Future Foundation, right? I'm going to put that in the comments now. And it, the acronym would be PSFF, right? That was the overwhelming, this was the overwhelming favorite. That's true, Kevin, they will. True, true, Buzzy will. Right, so let's uh, let's 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 talk about this uh, name, guys. I want your feedback because I want to get it decided because this thing is getting registered tomorrow. Right, so the overwhelming favorite was Pigeon Sport Future Foundation, PSFF for short acronym. Right now, the second favorite one was Racing Pigeon Foundation. Right, that's the second favorite one. Um, like somebody said earlier, forgive me, I can't remember who it was, been a busy day. Like somebody said earlier, the roller and the tipler guys have as many problems like a, a very good friend of mine went locally the other side of my town he keeps iranian high flyers he's one of the biggest iranian high flyer guys around well in the country and he's got a couple of hundred birds he has exactly the same problems with his iranian high flyers as we do with racing pigeons so there's arguments for us and against with using the word racing in this organization's <laughs> name. Now, the overwhelming, like I said, the overwhelming um, favorite was Pigeon Sport Future Foundation, right? A couple of people did have a valid point in that the word pigeon in there from a branding or a public uh, perception point of view may be negative i get what they're saying which is why i put other um other options in there right but i think my my take on it for what it's worth is this organization is going to help promote what fantastic animals pigeons are they are not the street peckers on the the street that you see whether you're talking about racing pigeons show pigeons tipplers rollers they are fantastic, phenomenally interesting animals. So there's one point of we don't use the word pigeon in there. I, I disagree. I think we should. And, and part of the job of this organization will be to get over how fantastic it is through promo efforts and what have you that we can do. The second favorite was Racing Pigeon Foundation. If we take out... Uh, sorry, and but then it was. It's a very good point that the word sport has to be put in, right? Um, so the overwhelming, the overwhelming winner of the poll was Pigeon Sport Future Foundation, right? Um, do we go with the favourite, which is Pigeon Sport Future Foundation? So. The good points is it can encompass the tippler and the roller guys. And you know the numbers involved in those guys. They have exactly the same problems with birds of prey. And ultimately, you know, we don't need to make this about just racing pigeons. Yes, we all love the sport of racing pigeons. But equally, for different people, keeping rollers and tipplers is perhaps more applicable. So I'm certainly not opposed to not, you know, working with them guys as well. Um, so that covers it for that future. Uh, the word sport has definitely got to be in there and future. It is about the future because we're looking to create a revolutionary organization, right? So, well, I'll come back to the questions about the Eagle Owls in a minute. I hate the word fancies, John. That's <laughs> uh so pigeon sport sounds more better more inclusive agreedly so can we make the decision that the overwhelming 
uh, winner of the poll, the, the overwhelming favourite of the poll is the one we should go for, which is Pigeon Sport Future Foundation. Um, have I frozen? Yeah, so Pigeon Sport Future Foundation. And uh, we can have a discussion whether, I mean, that's a bit of a mouthful. But I think it's all right because you'd actually just use the acronym PSFF. You'd use the PSFF acronym all the time. Um, I've missed the conversation here, Kevin. But anyway, um, yeah, so Chris, we're going to go with a favorite. I agree. Let's go with a favorite. So we are going with Pigeon Sport Future Foundation, which the acronym for it will be PSFF. I will get that registered tomorrow. We are starting it quick. We, are mean, we mean to go on. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it uh, professionally. And like I say, the Eagle Owl project is just one of the projects we'll start. Needless to say, we're going to need as much help, input as possible. We'll get it set up properly that people can donate just a small amount on a monthly basis. We'll do, um, we'll do a charity auction to get this uh, Owl project going. And um, yeah. That's the plan. So um, I will get that started tomorrow. I'll be, it's another thing I'll be talking to you all about, but I genuinely think we need to uh, take the bull by the horns and get going. And if we can just raise 10 or 20% of the money that flyers raise, raise every single year for other charities, like I said, I'm not opposed to, raising money for other charities in the sport because like i'm going to be doing a charity auction for my music is life foundation which helps people with mental health i've been talking about so i'm not saying you know stop supporting other charities i'm saying at least a portion of what you guys raise every single year should be going back in to building promoting growing our own sport that's what we're talking about that's what this and it, this organization will do, and it will work with other organizations and be against, it'll be working with them, we can work on the plans together. But the big thing with this organization is we don't have any of the red tape and the bullshit or any of that stuff. If we agree it's a good project to do, we will do it. If we agree there's a worthwhile cause uh, and there's somebody who can help or there's a way we can promote it, we will do it. There'll be no bullshit, no red tape. I'm not into that, life's too short. And moving forward, if we grow this thing, like I said, it could become a really big thing. Harry Josh, it will become a really big thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's the plan, guys. I'll get it started. Uh, I'll get it started tomorrow. Let's just check the comments. Um, I've got this guy in contact already where we can source European egos. I was told that there actually there's, there's far more of a supply than there is a demand for these. Uh, and, and they are amazing. They're stunning birds. I mean, I personally can't wait to keep one. Tell you what, guys, I I will, not that I know what I'm doing yet, but I will learn. I, I want to fly one of these out myself. I, I can't wait to do that. Um, Lee, Lee, PSFF. Lee, if you're free in a little while, I don't know what time you call it a night, but I can't do it straight after this. But if you are free, I would really like to speak to you for a bit. Um, Lee Hammond, yeah. I know what PSFF, but you know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing. We'll see, Kevin, what happens. Uh, look at doing something at Blackpool Show. I agree, although that's a RPRA show, so I'd need to speak to people. But, yeah, exactly. 
this is what I was saying to Johnny last night, right? We don't want to just set one project <laughs> up. We want to go and look at a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, sorry about my power, he's decided he's going to start chatting. The bigger picture is we need to help each other and we need to help ourselves. And that's what this organization is going to do. So I want to get a publicity program going and a schools program and a documentary and get on TV and, and, and make people realize what amazing creatures these are. Like we said earlier, it won't just be dedicated to racing pigeons. Obviously, that will be the most prevalent part. But let, get the roller and tickler guys and the fancy guys involved as well. Because they, you certainly with the birds of prey issue, they've got exactly the same problems as we have. It's slightly different, but the, it, ultimately it's the same problem. And, get, you know, there's, there's a lot we can do with this. And like I say, we work with existing organizations if they want to work with us. I've already offered to help my services to any existing organization out there. Continue to do that. Like I said, marketing promotion is my thing. And uh, I can talk, as you've already heard. Um, so, show us your parrot. I'll try and do that in a minute. He'll probably fly over and see me in a minute. I've put pictures of him on there. Um, Harry, shush. Naughty. Start saying naughty at me. Um, right, guys. So, um, that is the plan, all right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to go with the uh, PSFF, Pigeon Sport Future Foundation. I will get that registered or the ball rolling on getting it registered tomorrow. It will be, in theory, just for anybody that wants to know, it will be a limited by guarantee company, which is used for clubs, uh, student unions. Uh, you know, I've got the thing up here to give you an idea. Um, sports associations, membership organizations, um, charities like Oxfam, you know, it's it's... It's a, it, it, that's the thing to do to start. Setting up a charity actually is incredibly difficult and you need to be shown to be um, raising a minimum of 5,000 a year and it's a lot of red tape. This is a way of getting it started um, as a good, solid organization. That's what we're going to be doing. So I will be setting up PSFF um, tomorrow and we will get the ball rolling and then we can properly get starting off. Um, Basnickel, yeah, exactly. Show pigeons, giant pigeons, high flyers, all sorts. Uh, the Egar project is against the law, so it's dead in the water. W w why are we breaking the law, Andrew? We're talking about keeping birds in our area to protect our birds within that area, and we're looking to create a breeding program that enables other people to do it. What, what's against the law with that? If the eagle owl finds my parrot, we're going to have problems. If the eagle owl finds my small dog, we're going to have even more problems. I think my big dog will be all right, but my small one will be screwed. Andrew, we are you are the first negative person I've had on this feed tonight. We are doing nothing against the law. Um, we are not planning to release these birds, Andrew. So that isn't realism because we're not planning to. That is not part of our mandate to do that. What we will do long term is we will look to petition and get these birds protected as the peregrine is. And with this nonprofit organization that we are setting up, we will look to petition whoever has to be petitioned. And we already have a, a lawyer that's watching this live feed that has offered his services to help us. We will look to petition to get the European Eagle Owl on the same standing as the Peregrine. We are not looking to promote, we are not looking to illegally release European Eagle Owls. That is categorically not what we're looking to do. We are looking to set up a non-profit organization to, like I've said, promote the sport, help the sport, grow the sport. And one of the projects within it will be how can we get 
some nature rebalance so where we can petition like you heard somebody talking about earlier with freedom of information acts the rspb this is our biggest way like lee says totally legal to breed them in captivity and breed a network of them to release in the future yeah we i I don't know what at what point you came in on the, 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 the conversation, Andrew, but right at the very beginning, within the first 10 minutes of this thing, I said, here's some clarification. You cannot feed live food to them and you cannot release them. It is illegal to release them. This is what we've said already. So maybe you've come in late. If you have, we've already stated that. We are not talking about breeding and releasing. We are talking about breeding, flying them locally, to protect our birds, which I will be doing here, I will fly my eagle out. I will fly my eagle out out here to protect my birds when I start keeping them from other birds of prey around. That is completely legal to do. A trained bird, and then, as a long period of time plan, we will then start petitioning with help from people alike to start getting this bird. Get the same rights as the peregrine falcon has. Agree, Kevin. We do. You can free fly an eagle in eagle owl if it's trained. You can fly it. There's absolute uh, people fly eagle owls all the time, mate. Gary. Um, hey, Martin. How you doing? So, you know, look, I, I, I don't mind criticism, but I don't like realism or negativity. Realism based on stuff that you've not already heard we talked about earlier on. Okay, maybe you missed what we said earlier on, all right? Maybe that's the case. Um, but it's like the idiot geezer last night, asshole, that I had commenting a couple of hours ago on my live feed. Um, this is a waste of time. I'm a dick. Da, 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 da. I think he was related to actually the technical problems we had at the beginning, and I couldn't get Johnny on or whatever. Um, why the hell are you even logging on to watch? The geezer commented, This is a waste of time, and I'm a dick within the first few minutes, and then continued to watch for another 12 minutes. Well, who's wasting your life? Only yourself. If you think I'm a dick and I'm a waste of time, don't tune in. Geezer's blocked now. We'll never be able to see another live video I ever do. But and I'm not putting. You know, I'm not saying. I'm not saying, Andrew, that I, I, I'm passing you in the same thing. I'm not. I, I, I'm completely up for criticism. But the reality is, we're not talking about releasing them. We're talking about building up one day so that these birds can be protected the same as the peregrine falcon is. I hope that clears it up. So, um, if my able assistant hasn't got anything else for me, we're going to get off. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to get pigeon sticker, car stickers. Um, yeah, I agree. Branding's everything, man. Um, Pompeii, I hope I pronounce your name right. I'm sorry if I do. Don't. Uh, yeah, branding, everything. This is why this name's important. This is why PFFF is important because it's easy and that's branding and marketing and all that stuff. Uh, I feel one of the night. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Gary. Uh, I need another call with you, Gary, as well. Right, guys, I'm going to crack on because uh, stuff to do, busy, busy. Thank you for watching. Still 58 of you on now. Much appreciated. We are going to be looking for help on this. We're going to be looking for donations. We're going to be hitting up all the top flyers out there for birds. We're going to kick this off properly. We're doing it properly. Long-term, objective, constructive plan as a whole organization. A non profit organization, and like I said, the European Eagle Owl project is just one. I like a fight, a bit of a rebel at heart, really. Some would say an arsehole, I call myself a rebel a bit. I don't mind it, but what I don't like doing is fighting a losing battle. And with the right organization structure and with the right people behind us, we can at least start. And the ability to be able to start and the long-term goal of being able to fight nature with nature, like I said yesterday, I have no problem. I will not even kill a fly. I love every single animal. Um, but the artificial breeding 
of peregrine falcons is a major issue and that's not right because it's not nature anyway i could carry on but i won't uh right thank you guys for watching 40 minutes in I'm gonna crack on uh much appreciated if you aren't yet following me on facebook live just press the little button that says get notified please go and like my racing pigeon international page because i'm nearly up to my limit i've had to get rid of people that i've never spoke to on there and i've not got that many people on my friends i'm nearly at the five thousand friends limit and we will of course for this organization set up a separate page and we'll get that all out there as well i will get this registered tomorrow all being well it will go through tomorrow we'll get a website up it'll be basic to start and we can get the ball rolling momentum forward thinking some revolution bit of luck talking to the right people working together no negativity objective constructive moving forward that's what we need so thank you a lot for watching guys um if i owe you messages i will do my very best to catch up i'm just going to spend an hour with my son um to chill out for an hour and then i will be back on lee if you're still watching i'd really like to speak to you gary i need to call with you whenever possible just as a quick one thank you for watching guys please share this video please share my video from yesterday with johnny mcwerter as, as as a guest johnny's a big part of this whole european eagle out plan it's it was his brainchild um and also please share the video about young bird losses as well just so people can see what we're trying to do and get what we're talking about thanks again for watching be lucky, keep flying, catch you soon.